in our comp it's called background and what else do we have in here and so the next thing that pops up is text and oh, music of course we should probably import that and then our footage and those are the only things that we're going to be importing for now so let's import those again let's import our music in this case it's a it's a wave format but you can it accepts just about anything um, MP3s, uh, QuickTime movies, MP4s, M4Ps, all sorts of stuff. As long as you have the proper codec on your computer, it should open up. So let's bring in our WAV file, and uh, yeah, and just like and just like what we did with our NinjaGator uh, JPEG, we can double click on it and it opens up as footage. If we double click on the WAV form, there's nothing visual to see, but you just, you can still scrub through. And play this if you want, and you can set your in and out points in case it's like a 30 minute, 30 minute song, something by Led Zeppelin, and <laughs> just kind of trim it down to what you need to. And the last thing that we're let's close this off. The last thing that we're going to import is our footage that we have from the video game, which is TF footage as a MOV. I like keeping my footage as a QuickTime or a .MOV uh, format, dot .movie format, because. Um, QuickTime gets along very, very well with uh, After Effects, despite what's going on right now with Apple and Adobe. Um, they still work really well together. QuickTime is a really clean, easy-to-read format for After Effects, and uh, in general, it's really cool to work with. You can edit your video if you need to, but since it's only 15 seconds, we're not really going to do any major editing. You can set the in and out points and then drop it into your comp, but we won't be doing any editing in After Effects. You generally want to do that elsewhere. And After Effects just is for, you know, doing the After Effects. So, let's get started with this. The In our example movie, the first thing that happens is we have our logo pop-up. This is our JPEG, and it fades in a few seconds later. At one second, actually. So, let's shrink this again. And we're going to do just that. Right now, our black solid is doing nothing. It's just kind of hanging out there. And to, so, let's put something into our comp. Let's drag our Ninja Gator by click and drag it down into the timeline. And bam, it shows up right here. It's a little out of proportion. It's out of control and big. But that's okay, because After Effects is great for doing stuff like adjustments and scaling. And that's exactly what we're going to do with our JPEG, which was bigger than our composition. So let's click on, in the timeline, we're going to click on our Ninja Gator JPEG uh, layer that we've had set up. And After Effects does work with layers, just like in Photoshop. And it's a great system. So if you've worked with Photoshop, you have a really good head start on working with After Effects. So let's go into here and adjust the size just by grabbing one of the points um, anywhere. And then the corner is easiest because you can adjust everything at once versus just one at a time. And you can see that we're kind of squishing it and compressing it. We really don't, we want to preserve the shape of it. Uh, and we want to scale uniformly. So once you start scaling like this, if you hold down the Shift button, It'll scale universally for you. So let's get it about here. Let's zoom in a bit because that's kind of tiny. This is at 100% because my monitor is kind of big, and I like it that big. And uh, that looks about the right size. We can we can do a matchup, but eh, we'll just eye it from here just to be a little different. And it centers it itself automatically. If you ever want to know where you are exactly on the on in terms of like the the composition. You can turn on your grids. This is your little grid button that you have here, your grid and guides. Uh, one thing you always do want to check is your title and action safe. Uh, back in the old days, because people have different sizes of TV and like where they get cut off and stuff, uh, After Effects and just the film industry in general has have these labels of action, title, and safe areas and stuff. This outermost rectangle, um, this is where stuff can get easily lost. So you don't want to put any vital information in there. The second, the second rectangle that's in there is your action safe area, which means anything that's kind of moving will generally be seen. Um, and most of the action in the, does take place in the middle. And this inner, this inner rectangle that we have here is your what's called your title safe. That means that any text in here will almost guaranteed to be shown up on any TV, regardless of how it's formatted or weird it is. So let's just check this right quick. And it's also really good because it has a center reticle, so we can center our image on it. And um, if you're not comfortable with the mouse or if you want something a bit more precise, you can use the arrow keys on your keyboard to move and adjust these at precision levels. But we're going to just leave it there right now. It looks about pretty centered anyway. And let's go back to our example movie. And then so we have this, and we've dumped in our image onto the thing. But 
it's just 15 seconds of this image it's right there so what we're gonna have to do is animate the opacity so like over the span of one second we want this image to show up really easy to do and uh, this is where After Effects comes into play you can animate just about any property that it has you know how we scale that we can animate that we can animate the position by rotating that Let's hit control Z didn't want to change that and that's easily done by twirling down this menu and in here you're going to have transforms. Your transforms are what can be animated. You're going to have your anchor point, position, your scale. Right now the anchor point is centered. And that's exactly what, what's kind of the default, what animates. Your position on the screen. The scale, right now we're at 37.1 because we did scale it up. Your rotation and opacity. But we're only going to be worried about opacity. We want this to fade in over the course of a second. And um, let's get to that. So let's go to our one second mark. There's a couple of ways of doing that. One is you can move, you can scrub to it using on the timeline, or you can type it in right here by clicking on the the time code, and then slapping this on. We want this at one zero zero frames. Bam, just to make it real precise. Um, if you because you know if you see this, we're at a fifteen second frame for all this, and we're moving this around a lot. If you ever wanted to get very precise. The way that you zoom in on your timeline is using this mountain kind of function slider down here. And it has small mountains and it goes to bigger mountains. And it really should have followed a standard of like flowers to mountains, but it's just little mountains to big mountains, whatever. So as you slide towards the big mountains, your timeline, uh, it zooms in on your timeline. And you can work all the way down if you, you know, down to the frame level. And you'll be working a lot at the frame level in After Effects and in motion graphics as well just because editing is you know it's all about the timing and sometimes you need those frames so we'll, but we'll zoom in to something a little bit more manageable to about let's say five seconds and eh, it's close enough around there here's our five second mark and so now we're at the frames here's our one second mark and now we're gonna animate this opacity so here's our layer and here's our opacity. If you just click on opacity right now, you can enter any value up to 100%. There's like 85. You can see it kind of dimmed down. Let's put it at 15 and dimmed really far down. But let's slip this back to 100. Or the other way of changing these values is to click and left, move left and right to, to slide it. It's a slider. And that's a lot more visual and cool to look at. So let's put this at 100%. But if we change the value, let's say we wanted it at 50, that's half opacity, it just stays there, it's regardless. We, we wanted this to happen, to have a change over time. And we can do that easily by going, let's change this back to 100 at the one second mark, because that's where we want it. And now we want to set a keyframe, so that way After Effects knows that there's going to be a change in the opacity. So let's hit the stopwatch. The stopwatch we'll add a keyframe at one second. At, so at one second there's a keyframe telling After Effects that this layer, this picture, is at 100 percent. And uh, it doesn't look like anything's happened but what we did is we put in a value that we can change. So now let's go to the very beginning of the comp by sliding this over or alternatively using the shortcut home. You can hit home on your keyboard and it'll take you to the very beginning and at that very beginning is where we're gonna want the change we want this to be at zero zero opacity so let's change that right now let's change that to zero hit zero and then hit enter and look at that we've created a keyframe at the very beginning that's at zero opacity and it fades up to 100 percent by time it reaches one second and